culture is actually when you lose that way it's tough This rendition of my downward slide into insanity is brought to you by DraftKings. Sports betting has come a long way in the past few years. It's become far more mainstream and is embraced by the leagues themselves. If done responsibly and properly, it can add a different element to the games. And with DraftKings, you can be ensured that your money is secure. There were legitimate sportsbook located right in the US, which means they're both safe to use and reliable. It's a top-notch enterprise that I'm honestly very bullish about from a personal standpoint. I may be a total amateur when it comes to sports betting, but I like to think I can see upside in a product. When they offer new customers up to $1,000 in free credits with a deposit, I'd say that's a good deal. They offer it all to the season better. Player props, live betting, futures betting, and more. If it's not available in your state yet, no problem. The DraftKings Fantasy app offers millions of dollars in prizes up for grabs every week. And with basketball season coming upon us as well, plenty of opportunity there. Once again, they're offering up to $1,000 in free credits with an initial deposit. Just use the promo code UTREE in the description below. It's all thanks to the legend of DraftKings and the relentless quest for superiority in the betting scene. And as always, if you choose to bet, remember to gamble responsibly. You seem to have had only one good Thursday night game a month ago. That's the only positive fortune we get. Otherwise, the media will do nothing but suck Tom Brady's dick as he beats the shit out of a team he should beat the shit out of. He did not forget the scars of Matt Patricia's terrible defense undoing him in that Super Bowl. It burns in his heart, and he treated the Eagles like one of his horrific torture victims. Brady is the Inquisition, and Jalen Hurts is the poor bastard who won't convert. Philly itself is so broken that they cheer running the ball. Their play calling is that useless. They use this momentum to rally, but they fail to realize that the NFL hates defenses. This man stared lovingly into Leonard Fournette's eyes as Fournette deliberately bumped into him. That's taunting on the Eagles! Get this emotion out of my league! Brady needs to win! Tough shit, Philly. You sucked, but you'll probably have three top ten picks next year. It's not if Howie Roseman fucks it up. It's how. Tank bulls. They're so uncared for that America outsourced this game to London. Maybe someday those chaps won't get teams that grind their dicks into a blender. And maybe someday the Dolphins will learn not to rupture our fucking spleens when they have a shred of expectation. Remember when we thought Shan Gailey was the thing holding back Miami's offense from greatness? Yeah, those were some good times. This team is such fucking trash they're strangling fish in the ocean. Jacksonville has lost 20 consecutive games to this point, yet with how badly their everything is played, Urban's gonna be looking for Young Tail at a club tonight. Maybe you'll find an exotic girl named Tua turned the ball over. Despite the Dolphins' 17-3 lead, we realized that Trevor Lawrence was hyped as a top draft pick. In spite of being handicapped by shitty coaching and no talent, the Jags are sneaking their way back into this game. Be lucky that this newly botched punt was inconclusive. The fact that it's this close, this late, I smell bullshit on the horizon. 54 yarder, nope. And got it! What the fuck, so now we're imitating free kicks because we're in England? Good to know. And good to know the Dolphins are back to tanking even though they don't have their first round pick. You worthless assholes. I don't even want to see the final drive for Jacksonville. Just end my life in perpetual disappointment. To win it. It's away, and he got it! Jacksonville wins their first game since Phillip Rivers was daggumming the field. Fuck you, Miami, but to cap your blowholes with flex tape. I had faith in you, cuts! Welcome to how Houston felt last year, boys. You blew it! The most shocking turn of events this side of the continent, it has been once again revealed that the New York Giants are an ass birth. The LA Rams just waltzed into their house, stabbed everyone in it, had enough time to place their bodies as ornate decorations, and make themselves a cheese board. And then enjoy it with charcuterie and a glass of wine and then burn the house down. The Giants' offense is heinous pig shit, and nothing says it more than with a constant barrage of turnovers, drop passes, and the only consistent thing about Daniel Jones' game. Fumbles. LA wanted a decisive win with their might at MetLife, and they did it with ease. Nothing besides standard domination on their front. I look forward to the Giants doing absolutely nothing about their terrible team. You see John Murray on the street taunt him relentlessly. The Rams did plenty of that on Sunday with their skill as well. 
Valve's about to call this a tank bowl, but there are very stark differences between the Colts level of bad and the Texans shit swamp. When he's able to breathe and not have his glass body shattered, Carson Wentz can still sling the football. To be fair, that's to be expected out of a QB who's playing the NFL equivalent of Yukon. This game was absolute annihilation, and it might be confirmed in the Guinness Book of World Records for longest ass whooping in Indiana. Houston continues to slowly die, withering and writhing, begging for someone to put them out of their misery. As Indianapolis notices them on the street, they don't give them relief. They merely laugh at their pain and walk away. Indy knows that their life is a far worse punishment than death could ever bring. Once again, I have no fucking idea how to assess the Baltimore Ravens this season. They are a mystery box. You never know what's going to be inside of it in a given quarter. Hell, it could even be a mystery box. Against a White Hot Chargers team, it was expected to be a brutal reality check for a group dancing around raindrops. We somehow didn't see it happening to the team coming into Baltimore. The Chargers came off a statement win and somehow did the Charger thing by laying a massive egg. Do they realize that the defense they're facing has the coverage of a yardstick and is injured to hell? Last week, going for it on fourth down was a boom for the Chargers. Today showed the risk of those procedures. They just had nothing. And Baltimore is somehow 5-1, and one, despite every fucking opportunity to self-destruct. I understand nothing anymore. Someone please take me out of my misery like Lamar does his opponents. Since he is doing their first initiation in becoming a man. In ancient Sparta, young men would hunt down and kill a slave as a test to ascend to be a Spartan. The Bengals honored this tradition by attacking a poverty franchise and killing them with witnesses. Uh, some witnesses. Detroit was Detroit, there's no argument there. Dan Campbell cried last week and it still could not will them to not suck. Not with Cincinnati trying to overcome last week's devastating loss by missed field goals. With the talent they're showing, they have the potential to make some noise in December and January. I'd still prefer they get a better coach, but that's minor nitpicking. At Ford Field, everyone's a winner. Except for Detroit, they're irrelevant. Perhaps Jared Goff can show up and help out? Maybe the talent that's still there around him can? Any time would be nice. The Chiefs are such fucking ass this season. Everyone's fawning over their talent and Mahomes and Andy Reid, but I see right through them. And you should as well. The reskins are many things this year. A good football team does not appear to be one of them. Garbage play all around, Mahomes making careless mistake after careless mistake, a defense that only exists to be a background character to an offensive show? This isn't a fucking Super Bowl contender, this is a shell team that exists to put on a front of success. Tell me, should I feel good that the final result is deceiving? Wow, the Chiefs played for about 20 minutes, let's all suck their dick because of talent. Plan the goddamn parade down Grand Boulevard. Don't worry though, their time for retribution will come, and it will be relentless. On the other side, Washington is now sweating bullets. Their organization has been exposed again and the public is breathing down their neck for that damn good culture of theirs. Dan Snyder stews in his not office. He needs something to get the heat off the email scandal that's plagued the football world as of late. Then the light bulb goes off. Hey, you know what would get us goodwill? We're tiring Sean Taylor's number this week! People loved that guy! His family may not know about it, but you can't make fun of us! We care about Sean Taylor. So much that it's a rush ceremony to hell and back. They even corralled a dude who needs to be beaten heavily to where Taylor's number is painted and he did a TikTok dance to generate clicks. It's infuriating, yes, but don't blame the irrelevant Mahomes for being a douche. Blame the reskins for the rush job and the disorganization. That's why I consider them the lol cow of the week. Never stop being a snake, Dan. Sell a fucking team! There are many great traditions in the world of football. Dallas Cowboy fans never shutting the fuck up about their team. Roger Goodell being a clueless anti-football pussy. And Darren Rodgers walking into Chicago and making the Bears his bitch. It's a comfort to all of us in the NFL. Green Bay is all but a guaranteed win in their lap. Which unfortunately might be going away in the near future. Not for what the Bears are doing, though. That offense is unsurprisingly still shit. Justin Fields just isn't ready for a full-time role yet. It greatly limited the already limited offense and playing a quality team leaves them flawed and desperate for big defensive plays. Be shocked that it didn't work out again here. Green Bay maintains tradition. Rodgers still lives rent-free at Soldier Field. There is one thing I have to disagree with you on, Aaron. You don't own Chicago. The McCaskies do. And they know how to torture that fan base in crueler ways than you could ever imagine. 
You want to know something? I thought the Carolina Panthers were going to make strides this season. Maybe not playoff contender, but I like some of the signs they were showing in terms of their team structure. These past few weeks, I have one question. How fucking useless are they without Christian McCaffrey? This offense has become straight up dog shit. Sam Darnold can't make a pass. His receivers can't make a catch. The offensive line blocks as well as McAfee antivirus. It just lets everything through. If the Panthers had any sort of offense, this game isn't even close. Minnesota isn't exactly good. They find unbelievable ways to lose football games. And with how they're allowing Carolina to stay in this match, it's not exactly a surprise why they're under 500 to start the year. But this is supposed to be a legitimate contender, am I right? Even with both teams being utterly useless and not worthy of the postseason, Carolina is managing to somehow not shit their pants on offense anymore. Most stunning, despite everything they've done to kill themselves, the Panthers are somehow still alive. Behold the game-tying touchdown and two-point conversion. Vikings fans quietly cheer this fortune as it might mean the handicap of Mike Zimmer may finally be gone. Unfortunately for them, Brian Burns is somehow too fast to tackle anyone in their in-field goal range. They can put the dagger in the Panthers' throat. Remember last week against Detroit? This is for the win. From the right hash, Joseph from 47, it is wide to the right! That was an aberration. If Minnesota is going to beat Carolina, they'll have to do it without special teams. Conveniently, they were delivered a quick win off Amazon Prime. Good times were had by none. Minnesota gets to pretend they don't suck and Carolina just sucks. Mike Zimmer becomes Mike Myers and will not die. Can we just give both teams a loss for this game? The Raiders were dealing with a chaotic week with John Gruden forced to resign and having their special teams coordinator Rich Bisaccia take the temporary reins. So do you know how Denver usually has their best response by completely shitting it and forgetting anything relating to the game of football? Let's just say Vegas had their rallying cry this week with more than a moral victory. It was good resolve from them to come back after all the shit that's happened to win. It's really impressive. But the Broncos are just fucking bad. Quite the shame when a team can no longer play the garbage of the league to stat pad, isn't it? Shit offense, exposed and flawed defense. Same stuff that happened last week without the comeback. And the thing is this. When Denver was forced to try and make plays on offense, they shat the bed. It was as pathetic as what Vic Fangio calls a game plan. Perhaps that's too soft a word for them. Vegas was visibly wounded, ripe for the taking, and they still failed miserably. Enjoy 500, boys. If you're lucky, you'll manage to stay there for a while. This year is shaping up to be a pain that Cleveland hasn't felt in decades. Suffering through eons of terrible football can't prepare them for a return to the factory of sadness. But it's for a new reason. Because of the ungodly amounts of injuries that are plaguing them. Arizona does not care. They need to maintain their impressive form and they showed no mercy. With the Cardinals offense, with how obliterated Cleveland is on both sides of the ball, it was a feast of blood. The game was so ugly it played out like a funeral for the entire fucking city. The defense was as exposed and broken as it was against the Chargers last week. They were outmatched on all fronts, and the Cardinals continued their undefeated march on to their next victim. This was supposed to be the year a new tradition was formed for the Browns, and they were technically right. It just might not be the one you were expecting. Bring out your dead, Cleveland. Imagine the Cowboys without a god-awful coach squatting down on their back every single week. They have incredible talent, that's never been the issue. The thing has always been that they've never had good coaching. Dallas is either at ass kissers, coaches past their prime, or Mike McCarthy leading the way. Knowing McCarthy, all he took from Analytics 101 is to go for it on fourth down. Play calls or situations don't matter, just go for it. And they may even fail in that situation, but talent will excuse executive incompetence. The Cowboys should be wiping the floor with New England's remains. These aren't the Patriots of past years, they're mortal now. Yet for some insane reason, it's not only competitive, but New England is fighting for their lives. Neck and neck in a twisted duel of fate. The Patriots snagged the lead in the fourth quarter, but you can never count out Dallas. Not with their offensive talent. Cue Greg the leg after a long drive. That leg needs some tweaking, it keeps veering to the left. Looks like high end talent will need to save them again. Here I come to save the day! Man, Trevon Diggs is so good. They found a gem in him. So how do the Cowboys screw this up? Deep ball, and... Oh, somehow they blew the coverage! What the hell was the safety doing on that play? I still don't trust the Patriots to hold on, though. Not with the Cowboys' talent on offense. Maybe they can get some luck? 
Not really. There were some big penalties on Dallas that took them back to their 45, but Dak flexed his elite coach carrying skills to get them back into range for Greg the Leg. By we're headed to overtime. New England gets the ball first and they stall out to punt. Bill, I'm usually the conservative type, but it's fourth and short at your 45 in overtime. You can't afford to give Dallas the ball back with their skill. And with the incredible powers of hindsight, the Cowboys' star power goes to work and gives Gillette Stadium a final air show to end it all. Here I come to save the day! This shouldn't have been close, but Dallas escapes with a victory thanks to the wonders of high-end talent. Be warned, though. You won't survive like this for long. Mike McCarthy is going to hold back this team. Celebrate for now, but Dallas can't dance like this all season. January is far more unforgiving. This is old school football at its finest. Not really, it's more that both offenses are terrible and the defenses are carrying the brunt of the weight. How am I saying that about the Seahawks defense? I know Pittsburgh's is supposed to be good, but them? The Steelers are up by 14 at half though. Seattle's without Russell Wilson and harken back to the 2017 Packers without Aaron Rodgers. Then Pete Carroll yelled at them in the locker room and threatened to play an endless loop of Jordan Peterson podcasts. I think that may have been enough of a motivation for the offense to get its shit together. For whatever reason, Pittsburgh can't stop the running game. Can it just be like the Steelers where Najee has to do nearly everything to gain four yards? Apparently, Pittsburgh can no longer have easy games. As the Seahawks, under the guidance of Geno Smith, have tied the game. Dear God, kill us now. Cue more offensive utility until the Steelers have to drag the withered old horse for another final ride. It's ugly, but they're somehow being forced at gunpoint to move down the field. As Seattle drops an easy pick. Way to go, Jamal. I'm the best in the nation! Yeah, in your dreams, you fucking useless ass box safety. Now Pittsburgh gets to kick a field goal to retake the lead. But then, a miracle happened. Geno Smith channeled his days at West Virginia and guided Seattle down the field. And now it's going to... Oh no, DK, what are you doing? Just get the fuck out of bounds! Thank God it didn't cost them, but I'd think about that before dissing Shannon Sharp on Twitter. Jason Myers, now is your chance. This game is going to overtime. Motherfuck. With neither offense being unable to do anything, we're in for a ride. Both teams trade stalled offensive drives, but wait. Do I hear a sound in the distance? Here I come to save the day! TJ Watt, you fucking legend. I don't care that Watt already got paid. I demand you pay him more. Give him all of the money. Build him endless statues down North Shore Drive. He's the only reason Pittsburgh won. They're three and three, let the false hope consume me whole. So a situation happened with the Steelers game that's pretty infuriating. In the fourth quarter, Daryl Taylor suffered a dangerously serious injury that stopped play for a while. Thankfully, he's able to move his extremities and flew back with the team, so it's not worst case scenario, but it's what the fans in the stadium did. They were doing the fucking wave as he was lying on the ground. They didn't stop until the cart came out. Sure, you didn't know what was happening. I don't think both teams huddle around the 50 in the fourth quarter for no reason. Dude may have broken his fucking neck and the first response is to do the wave out of boredom? Fuck it, the people at that stadium doing that are also lol cow of the week. Best fan base in football, my ass. No one is giving Tennessee a chance in this matchup. They are justified, it is a team that lost in humiliating fashion to the Jets. And the Bills have been cutting down everything in their path for weeks. But you know the motto of football. Any given Sunday, anything is possible. It's technically Monday here, but Sunday is more prestige. There are a few things that make me happier in the football world than Derrick Henry obliterating defenses. The brute force, the elegant grace, and the sheer disrespect of his opponents all in one. I fucking love it. Never ever take this man away from us, football gods. Watching him play every week is a treat. Hey boys, if you're still in the Shadow Realm, can you check to see if Josh Norman is around? He hasn't been returning our calls. This endless rummaging through the Bills defense has us realize one thing. This game is an offensive duel. It's in different ways. The Bills threw raw air power in Tennessee with King Henry claiming victim after victim on his way to supremacy. Even into the fourth we expect the Titans to run out of gas, but they just don't. They're resilient fuckers, I'll give them that. For every shot Buffalo takes Tennessee as an answer. It's a legitimate heavyweight bout. With this Titan lead by three deep into the fourth, Buffalo almost had a dagger, but it got called back for a holding penalty. 
You can't let the game finish that easily. You need to up the drama and tension. Now the Bills march. Time slowly ticking away. The goal line moving ever so closer. The script is all but writing itself. Buffalo managing the clock enough to strangle the Titans at their own game. All they need is to go for the kill. Allen leans forward, and I don't think he got there! The Titans can play defense in the interior? Holy shit. Nothing against the play call by Buffalo, but that got blown up by an outstanding individual effort. Tennessee survives. Maybe I was too harsh on them for past failures. Maybe they deserve another look. I wouldn't mind seeing a rematch of this in January. Football is a brutal game. May the bell toll for the fallen. <coughs> Unit lost. Unit lost. Unit lost. Unit lost. Unit lost. Unit lost. <coughs> Unit lost. <coughs> <coughs> Thus concludes another week of this sermon on the field. Amen. Rodgers snaps it quick. Pressure coming. Scrambles to his right. Pumps and runs. Aaron Rodgers is inside the pylon. Touchdown Packers. It's Rodgers running for the score. Right on cue, Joe.